Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, it's just been an exciting time in general. There's so many things going on with Tesla, as you guys know. If you guys saw the last video, it's just crazy with the Tesla Model 2. Uh, we have a Cybertruck that can float. Who knows, the sky's the limit for what Elon's gonna talk about or what's gonna happen next. But I thought it'd be a great opportunity to kind of dive into a lot. I know there's always like uh, best of videos, top 10, top five, love, hate, that sort of thing. But what I really wanted to talk about today is after having the Tesla Model Y for two years, the better part of two years, between one or two models, right? Because I had a 2020 and then a 2022. Um, just my overall experience. I wanted to kind of share some of sort of the ups and downs on it, but really in general, just tell you the stuff that still sort of amazes me about it. So sit back, relax. You guys are watching the tall Tesla guy. You saw the video from the beginning. You guys know uh, we bought our original Tesla Model Y. We placed the order back in July of 2020. It was one of the early models at that point, but there was we didn't have really there weren't too many supply chain issues at that point. So we ended up getting our car rather quickly. It took about six weeks, which at the time I thought was ridiculous because you were still going to a dealership for a traditional vehicle and just buying what was on the lot. None of the stuff we're dealing with now was happening at that point. Um, so we waited six weeks, but I got it early September and loved it right from the start. I couldn't get over the acceleration and we don't even have the performance. I still don't. Couldn't get over the acceleration, the regen braking. I love the minimalistic interior. Honestly, uh, people always ask about the heads up display, the bifurcated dash, whatever you want to call it, whatever's right in front of you in a traditional vehicle. Uh, there's nothing like that in a Tesla. And you guys kind of know that from before other videos that I've shown you guys. All you have is the infotainment screen. I love it from the beginning. I typically drive as I am now with my hand on the top of the steering wheel. I'll rotate it to the side, a 10 and two sort of thing, but it kind of balances in between there. And in doing that, I block the heads up display anyway. So it becomes something that uh, I don't use as much as I probably could. I'm always looking around my arm anyway. So I love the fact that everything's on the middle console the, the infotainment screen. I loved that part of it, but it's the technology part of it, more so than just the setup and design of the car, but the technology, right? I love the fact that it's an all EV, 100% electric. There's no gasoline at all in it. Um, I like that part of it, but I was new to the EV space when I got it, so I didn't know what to expect coming into it. I love technology. I love the new gadgets and gizmos and stuff like that, so I adapted to that rather quickly but the driving experience. And when I don't drive this car, even after having it for two years, I'll tell you, it takes me a second to get used to it again. Or when I'm driving a gas vehicle, it takes me a second to get used to that. And I've been driving for the better part of my life, 20 whatever years, because I'm 18 now anyway. And I'll say like, um, it becomes second nature. It's an automatic response or an autonomous response, whatever you call that. and when you switch from one to the other, it's dramatic enough that it takes you a second. There's a little bit of a pause where you're sitting to yourself thinking, what am I doing here? What's happening? Why do I have to push the brake pedal? That sort of stuff. And those are the things that I jumped onto with a Tesla. Some of the things that I loved right from the beginning was that regen braking. We talk about it all the time and I don't need to get into the specs of it, the, the engineering of it. I probably couldn't anyway, but either way you are, they call it one pedal driving for a reason because you basically just drive with the accelerator. That's it. I hardly ever push the brake unless something jumps out in front of me. There's a dramatic event happening in the drive. I am 95% of the time using the accelerator to speed up and slow down, which is a, a unique experience. And it's really neat, especially when you get it dialed in, you know, how quickly or, or how soon you have to kind of feather off on it. And then you'll come to a complete stop obviously without incident or hitting anything like that. It's super neat, it's a great experience. And on top of that, it gives you range back to the car. You'll notice at the top of the screen, in the infotainment screen, there's the little green bar that runs across it when you're pushing or when you're feathering off in the accelerator, it turns green telling you you're giving power back to the battery. When it's black, it means that you're taking power from the battery. So if you're going downhill in an EV, you're actually getting more range than you would, obviously, if you're going uphill. 
It's a super neat experience. It's a neat phenomenon that I hadn't even thought about before getting the vehicle, and I love it. Absolutely love it. I can't say it's my number one feature of the car just because there's so many of them that are a lot cooler, at least cooler sounding than regen braking. But nonetheless, I love it through and through. I still, to this day, can't get over this panoramic glass roof. It's one of those things that uh, I love the look of it. I love the design of it. I know if you live in the heat sun belt of the United States and it is 150 degrees outside in the shade, you're probably gonna you know, have a little bit of apprehension with the sunroof. I can tell you over the panoramic class roof, I can tell you that it's heavily tinted. You can't see in it from the outside, but there is a little bit of heat transfer. Now I'm 6'5", I'm a little bit closer than normal people would be, I guess, to the roof, but it doesn't quite get down to my head, but it does make the cabin a little bit warmer. Now I would say like, I've seen people in Southern markets black it out. I couldn't imagine doing that. I think I would just live with it anyway because I love it so much. I've always loved the convertible feel. I love moonroof, sunroofs, that sort of stuff. And it doesn't beat this. The view you get through that, the panoramic glass roof is unmatched. So absolutely love that. And then on top of that, one of my first videos that I ever did, and it seems like it was so long ago because it was the main concern that I had at 6'5", I wondered if I would even fit in this car. I know Elon designed it, and Franz said that they designed it around taller people. Franz is pretty tall himself. I think he's like 6'3", though. And I can say that they succeeded. I've been in vehicles that are definitely smaller than this, that are comparable in exterior size or comparable in size class, and it's not even close to fitting as comfortably as I do in this vehicle. Driving is a dream in a sense that uh, I have leg room, I have arm room, I have shoulder room. More importantly, though, my passengers behind me have leg room. What Tesla has, and I guess any EV would as well, there's no center channel in the back, so the floor in the back is completely flat all the way across. Gives you a little bit of leg room on either side of the, of the seats. And then on top of that, it's just spacious in general. Tesla took every opportunity to utilize every cubic inch of space in this vehicle, from the spacious front to the two sub trunks in the back, the side compartments, the under seat storage, it just goes on and on and honestly, I'd say it's well utilized and I appreciate all of it. It's one of those things that when you have a baby or you have anything else you need to bring in your car, it uh, it quickly fills up. It fills up uh, every nook and cranny that we have here and I'm appreciative that there's so much space to start with anyway. When you take that part of it away and you add in the fact that I actually fit in the car, I would even fit in this car behind myself if I were driving as a passenger it's an amazing feel. It's an amazing feel in general. So I love the size and space in the car. I love the panoramic roof. And it's one of those things that even after two years, I still get in it and I'm astonished that after a long road trip, I don't have those pinch points. I'm not uncomfortable getting out of the car, anything like that. And then I can't talk about the astonishment of this part of it without going into it because everybody talks about range anxiety with the car. Is it real? Does it bother you? I can tell you it's not something that you think about and even after going on long road trips, I don't worry about it at all. Tesla has more range than any other EV in the market, about 330 miles of range. Now that's S, you know, perfect conditions. You're never gonna get it, but I got close to 310 miles, 305 miles when I did a range test on it at average temperatures. And I'll say that's more than enough, honestly. Tesla's supercharging network is so robust that there's a charger basically everywhere you wanna be. And it's comparable to the concerns that I had going from gas vehicles where there's gas stations everywhere to an EV where it wasn't gonna have charging spots everywhere, at least not as abundantly clear as gas stations. And it's not, but it's getting there. And Tesla's supercharging network is the most robust by far. More superchargers, that speed up and charge fast than any other EV charging structure that's currently out there. And that's including PlugShare, Electrify America, uh, EV and Go, I guess not PlugShare. So the supercharging network quickly diminished any concerns I had with range once I started going in the car. And then I was just allowed to have the opportunity to really appreciate the drive, the experience, everything else that the car had to offer which is something that after two years, I'm still amazed with. I still appreciate and I still love when I get in the car. I love getting out in the garage, unplugging the vehicle, having as full a battery as I wanted to, or at least I charged to, and then taking off on my day. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think below. Is there anything that you were concerned about? If you've got one, if you don't have one, if you're thinking about getting one that you want me to kind of dive into and I'll jump all over it. 
But either way, I hope you guys are having a great day, week, month so far. I hope you guys can enjoy the weather if it's good where you are. If not, I hope you guys can uh, look on the positive side. It's probably good for the grass and trees. So either way, guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.